Good good afternoon, St. George. This is Michael Harding. And this is Christina Harding. Here with On the Arts, that show that is dedicated to blowing the lid off of all of these wonderful artistic Boom. secrets yes. that we have. Boom, <laughs> drop the mic. Drop the mic, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> the show that we want to make sure that everybody knows about the opportunities that are out there, not yeah. only to observe as an audience member, but also to participate, maybe learn a new skill, maybe learn a new art, and mm -hmm. also to understand the people that are around here. We have so many wonderful, uh, electric, mm -hmm. exciting artists that are around town, mm -hmm. artists of all sorts. We have musicians and we have actors and directors and we have sculptors and painters and... Dancers. Dancers. Mm -hmm. All sorts of arts yeah. going on. Uh, now, we actually have had a few events that have happened recently. Mm -hmm. One uh, that had to do with one of our former guests, Josh Scott, yeah. who is the head of theater at Dixie's, uh, I keep wanting to say Dixie State, Dixie, Dixie High, High School. School. Mm -hmm. And what was that? Yeah, Starlight Express. We just got to go see that Monday night with all these teenagers. And wow, that was an amazing light show. And those kids... The, the talent that is in this town with these high school students and the hours they spent. I wish we could have seen all the other high school shows because I know that there was Fiddler on the Roof uh, out at Desert Hills High School. And then Pineview did Newsies. And I'm sure they were amazing. But these are big shows to be doing with these high school students. And they pulled it off. And no injuries, I, I understand. <laughs> I understand. There was there was a few bumps and bruises. Little but bit, okay, Latressa said there's a few little, nothing major, <laughs> so we don't have any tears with that, yes. But it was a, a wonderful show, and I think to be able to give their, uh, Josh to give his students that opportunity, that, you know, they, they always have that memory of the Starlight Express <laughs> and roller skates. It's pretty special. <laughs> yeah, it's the rest of their life. Experience. Yeah. Well, for those of you that don't know, of course, Starlight Express, that is uh, one of Andrew Lloyd Webber's works, <laughs> and it, it's very popular. Uh, uh -huh. It's kind of like cats, except for it has <laughs> no to kitties. do with trains. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no kitties. And uh -huh. you mentioned the roller skates. The entire thing is performed yep. on roller skates. Yeah. Uh, so I imagine the kids had a great time learning mm -hmm. different yeah, kinds of choreography. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they also, they had tracks that were built all the way around, all around the audience. The audience. Yeah. So when they get to the, the train races and such, mm -hmm. it really was yep. experiential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And then we also we uh, opened our show Framed out at Kayenta with Absolutely. a new play that was written by Y uh, and Y York, I believe. Right. Yeah, I mean, we finish her name, we call her Y. But that was, that's was that been a wonderful experience. And we've had artists from Kayenta speaking after the show about what it means to be an artist and a painter and sculptor out there. And it's been an interesting talkbacks to listen to them share their experiences after they've seen the show to explain how the artists think. And and yeah. What a great opportunity mm -hmm. for uh, visual artists, particularly, mm -hmm. who don't necessarily get to uh, speak or they don't seek out opportunities yeah, to yeah. speak. Yeah, and to share their knowledge and what it's like to sell their paintings and the struggle that artists go through. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but how yeah. wonderful that we have places like Kayenta. And there, there are also mm -hmm. galleries downtown right mm -hmm. next to the Electric Theater. There's a mm -hmm. wonderful gallery that displays a lot of local art, yeah. um, a lot of artists that aren't necessarily local but are from southern mm -hmm. Utah, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the Sears Gallery mm -hmm. on the campus of Dixie State University. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of local mm -hmm. artists that are displayed yes. there. And speaking of Dixie State University, they just recently have opened Alice in Wonderland in the Black Box, a children's show. And I we got to see it this morning. Right. Great job from the Dixie State University students and interacting with the children. And it's it's a quirky, weird Alice in Wonderland show. But, uh, but and music that was written by who was the composer of the music of this show, Michael Harding? Uh, the composer was uh, a gentleman by the name of Michael Harding. Yes, as a Michael of fact. Harding composed yeah. the music. So <laughs> original music by Michael Harding. But but they the students did a great job, and we got to watch it with a bunch of I believe fourth graders this morning. And to watch them interact with the audience and those students were fantastic. And those kids, oh man, they loved every second of it. Well, we've had many conversations uh, mm -hmm. in here about how genuine and honest kids are as yes. not only yeah. artists, but as an audience. Mm -hmm. And uh, what a wonderful gauge for mm -hmm. performers that are doing a show as to whether or not they are doing a good job <laughs> keeping the, the kids attention. Kids keeping honest, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, adults, we, we've become so jaded. We're like, mm -hmm. oh, yes, we will look very politely at what's <laughs> happening in front of us. The children... Not so much. Yes, and I have to say, when we saw Starlight Express, there were about four or five little kids in front of me who were just in love with one of the trains. <laughs> they had a big crush on that, whoever that was playing that part. I don't know his name. I'm not sure was, he played the role uh, of Rusty. Rusty, yeah. yeah. They were in love with a train. And I thought, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. So, so Rusty, yeah. if you are one of our eight listeners, we, well, hope, yes. that, uh, <laughs> we hope that you'll Woo! know that you are very much loved yeah, from that so, performance. Yeah, and, we, and we we're, we're 
soon to go out and see a bunch of musical performances that are going to be coming up with different choirs. I know they just had the children's choir sing with the St. George Chamber Singers last weekend, and I heard that went very well. We were unfortunately in, in another show. We couldn't go to that one, but but uh, I heard it was beautiful at the Tabernacle. So. Well, and especially with the holiday season coming up, there yeah. are going to be many, mm-hmm. many yeah. concerts, many, many the- yeah. theatrical productions. Um, yeah, look, for, keep your ear to the ground, mm-hmm. and yes. we're going to keep you informed as best we can. Uh, <laughs> but there are things happening all over, mm-hmm. and we hope you'll take yeah. advantage of that. Yeah. Well, now, to go into our uh, guest for today, yeah. uh, I just wanted to share a little bit of my past, oh, a dear. little bit of yeah. uh, uh, an experience. Are we going to cry? Um, I Well, I don't think you'll cry right. for... Uh, you know, for any kind of sentimental reason. Okay. You might cry if I go on a little too long. Yes, that might be true. But I will tell you that my brother and I, we always had this dream of being recording artists. <laughs> and, uh, you know, growing up, we we really wanted to get our voice out there. We were convinced that we were going to be famous singers, famous musicians. Mm-hmm. And um, recording at home was a little bit different in those days. Uh, <laughs> I believe when we had Adam Mast on here, we talked about how I tried to make a movie with one of those magic cube cameras and such. And, of course, that got very tedious. Well, trying to make a recording, mixing was a little different uh, at the time. And, you know, you really had to find a stairwell or you had to find the bathroom or someplace that had the acoustics that you wanted because we had one of those reel-to-reel cassette players. And, you know, we thought we were so high-tech because you just hit the play button but also Mm -hmm. hit that red record button. And we made what we thought were brilliant brilliant recordings and albums and uh, we actually still have a few of them today and I'm waiting for the humidity in the basement to take care of them uh, in ways that it's appropriate to take care of yeah. music that was mm-hmm. this bad but uh, as you know we grew up things got a little uh, better as far as the technology that was available now we have these laptops holy cow you have a Mac computer mm-hmm. and the things you can do both film wise and sound wise and, and and all sorts of options and such But then I remember going to college, I had a friend named Alan Ryan. And this was, of course, about 20 years after, uh, well, not 20 years, but, (laughs) you know, 15, 16 years after my brother and I had started to put together these albums. And Alan Ryan was a very gifted musician. Uh, He was influenced by both Elton John and Billy Joel. And he would sit down at the piano and he really crafted songs. He didn't just play something that sounded pretty Mm -hmm. um, or come up with a chord progression that sounded impressive. (laughs) He really made music and uh, he really made his lyrics work with the music and was very much a a poet musically is is how I would put it and he told me he was going to put together an album and I thought yeah sure all of us have tried that and uh, he actually did a very nice job he went around campus where I went to school and found all sorts of different uh, uh, resonating chambers if you will stairwells and bathrooms and also dorm rooms and they would hang the blankets <laughs> and the, you know the mattresses around to get a nice uh, yeah. a, a nice still feel But uh, he had a little bit more equipment, a little higher technology, and he actually created an album of songs that I still have to this day on cassette tape, Mm -hmm. Um, and he called it Images. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just thought it was so cool. And he he was one of the few that had an actual laser printer, Mm -hmm. so he could print out actually a cassette tape cover that looked very professional. Actually, I look at it now, and it's, you know, something that Mm -hmm. a second grader would do. But, uh, you know, it it was a very nice-looking album and such, and it was from him that I started to learn that making an album was more than just recording music. Mm. Making an album was really putting yourself out there. Making an album was telling a story with the music that you had. And Mm -hmm. uh, we have with us today in the studio a local songwriter, local singer, uh, local musician. And I don't use that term lightly, and I mean that very sincerely. There are some of us that we can play music. (laughs) There are some of us that can make a melody (laughs) on certain instruments or maybe even sing it. But there are special people called musicians yeah. who actually understand music and express themselves with mm-hmm. that. Here in the studio today, we have Latressa Smith. Yay, Welcome. Yay, Latressa. Thank you. Welcome. Such an honor to be on your show. Oh, we're so glad you're here today. That's it. We, we've had several uh, mm-hmm. local musicians. Actually, uh, most recently, we had Michael E. Nibson uh, on, mm-hmm. who's talked to us about that. Yeah. Uh, we've had some of the faculty here at Dixie mm-hmm. State University uh, who've mm-hmm. done some original compositions, Robbie Matheson and Glenn Webb. Uh, who shared their work actually with Grand Circle Music. Um, it, to start us off here, Latressa, and this is something that I ask a lot of the guests here, <laughs> why the heck are you here in St. George? <laughs> who are you? Where do you come from? 
Well, I was born and raised in a little town in central Utah named Moroni. Moroni. Yeah, little farm girl growing up there and um, moved to St. George after my mission and have been here ever since. That's why I'm here in St. George. I love St. George. My family's here. My husband's family's here. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. And yeah. how did you get going with music? I mean, mm-hmm. so many of our, our guests, they started when they were, you know, three years old and they put on the shows for their family. <laughs> how about you? Well, my first um, experience with music, I mean, I grew up in a home with music. And my mom likes to tell the story that my brother was practicing the piano one day. He's about 10 years older than I was, and I was probably two or three. He left the bu- he left the room, and then she could hear this music. She could hear this little tune kind of being plunked out and she thought I thought he was finished and she went into the music room and there I was I couldn't even see the keys and I was reaching up and finding the notes to repeat a tune that he had been playing so I just I've always had a good ear and I was just Mm -hmm. trying to play what he was playing so that's how I started with music and ever since then I have just always played something (laughs) wow yeah I, I have to read this bio that I got on her uh, just because I thought it was so darling, how you were to think. She said, Latress has been making music and writing songs from this time she could tr- stretch her tiny fingers up to reach the piano keys. She bought her first guitar as a teenager and has barely put it down since. A prolific songwriter, she has written many, many songs, self-recorded three homemade albums, a professionally recorded album with the Gypsy Three, and recently released a professionally recorded solo album, featuring special guests, including members of her band, Azure Sweet. Both the album and the band have been realization of a lifelong dream. Now, explain to us, Azure Sweet, was this mm-hmm. a band that just a group of friends got together? And yeah. what, what is this? Well, ever since I was little, I had a dream of being in a band. And it took me many, many years to finally get to that point where, you know, my kids were a little older and mm-hmm. I felt like I could branch out. And, and I just... It just happened. I had a conversation with someone I barely knew, and she said she played the violin. And I said, I've always wanted to have a band with a violin. Oh. And and she said, oh, that would be really fun. And I was like, do you want to, like, get together and start making some music or something? And so we did. We got together, and I had had all this music I had written, and I thought it would be so fun to have a whole band play this (laughs) music and not just me by myself with my guitar. Mm-hmm. So that's just kind of how it started. And and where did you go to record? Did you use a local um, studio? Yep, John Houston. John Houston, yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. Yeah, I think that's how I first got to know that you were a musician. I because mm-hmm. I knew I knew kind of you were the neighbor, mm-hmm. but then I started seeing you post and you were you were singing at different events around yeah. town. And where did you perform with Azure Suite? Um, we did a couple Ancestor Square performances oh, back yeah. when Suswo was sponsoring those. Uh huh. And we performed at some private events like award parties and a fundraiser <laughs> and just uh-huh. come um, the state or not state, but the county fair. Uh huh. So we did that. So, yeah, we had lots of the hurricane. You know how they do a park concert during yes. the springtime, uh-huh. I think spring. Yeah. So we did. We and did how long a few things. how long was Azure Suite around? Um, I started Azure Suite in kind of the fall of 2014. And we went until about the fall of 2016. Oh, great. Yeah. Wow. So a couple of years. We, yeah. yeah. Well, tell me about the group name, Azure Suite. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. What does that mean? Where is it from? Well, it's kind of a made-up name. You know, I, <laughs> I wanted something creative and unique. And um, it's kind of hard to explain what Azure Suite is but because it, it's sort of abstract. Hmm. But I, I think of Azure Suite as sort of the sky. I mean, it's mm-hmm. blue, Azure, blue. Mm-hmm. And Azure Suite is where you find hope. To me, you find hope in the heavens. Mm. And I don't know, like I said, it's kind of abstract, but that's how it made sense in my mind, the Azure Suite. And I love hope. Hope is kind of a theme throughout my life. Yeah. And so, and I had a song about hope and I thought, you know, hope is so important to me. Where, where does hope? And so I kind of wrote this song and then the band and yeah. Well, that's great. And, you know, that, that leads us to an album that right now that's their solo mm-hmm. album. You just recently released this, mm-hmm. and it's called uh, Hold On to Hope Yeah, is the name of this one. And so what made you start getting back into it? I mean, did you take a little break for a while? And then, because yeah. I know life and family and, and, you know, 
careers and yes. all that. When life gets busy, music for me kind of takes a, the back burner. And, uh. and so depending on my health or what's happening in my mm-hmm. life, sometimes my music is not as active in my life. Mm-hmm. And it was just a time in my life where I just really had all this creativity bottling up because oh. I hadn't been doing anything with it. And it just yeah. started pouring out of me. That kind of happens. It it ebbs and it flows and mm-hmm. it was just really coming. And so, yeah, I just, all these songs started coming. And previous to Azure Suite, um, I had been making music with some friends called the Gypsies Three. Gypsies kind of mentioned those. Mm-hmm. And that was a really fun time too. And that was kind of a... A different type of band where we didn't all play musical instruments, but we enjoyed singing together. I played the music, I played most of the instruments, uh-huh. and so. But Azure Suite was really fun to actually have, you know, all these different people with their instruments contributing, and mm. it was pretty fun. When you talk about your instruments, uh, you were telling us earlier before we actually started this broadcast <laughs> uh, that you have a, a few tracks that you've uh, created where your instruments were spoons. Am yeah. I correct on this? Mm-hmm. Spoons, spoons. You know, like the good old fashioned, <laughs> yeah. like the. Pioneers would play. Yeah, uh-huh. I dabble with the spoons. I dabble with any instrument I can get my hands on. The little penny whistle, you know, Irish uh. flute style, and um, ukulele, of course. And I have a banjo guitar, which is oh, lots of fun. Yeah. And so I like to throw in a few fun and interesting things in my music. Well, it's interesting that you, when you talk about the progression of how you've created music, uh, I'm interested in the fact that you started out just by trying to recreate a melody when you were very, very young, barely mm-hmm. reaching the, the keys. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you had these songs and you started writing music and such. And then you started recording music with self-produced albums and stuff. And now you've moved on even to a professionally produced album. What was your goal when you started with music? Was mm-hmm. it to go further? Was it to share? Was it for you? Well, originally, like I said, when I was a little girl, I always dreamed of having a band. When anybody would ask me as a child, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. I would always say a singer. And that was Mm -hmm. my dream of being on a stage. And probably even through high school, you know, you have that dream of becoming famous. And Jewel was a big star back when Ah, I was. And I really (laughs) idolized Jewel. She, you know, she was very Mm -hmm. earthy and very relatable. She wasn't too polished. and. And, and I thought, wow, she can do that. I can do that, you know. <laughs> and so I dreamt of being like Jewel. And then, um, and then I got married and I had kids. And I realized, you know, this is what I really want out of life is to be a mom and to have kids. Uh-huh. And I realized if I ever wanted to pursue a musical career, it would come at the sacrifice of being with my family. Mm-hmm. Not that I think now that I ever had what it takes to become rich and famous with music but so really it just became more about expressing what's in my heart that's Mm. what my music is it was never I mean maybe when I was younger it was all about sharing with the world but Mm -hmm. now it's really just more settled now yep yeah yep and I'm happy to share it with Mm-hmm. with my living room or you know whoever wants to hear it I'm happy and if that's as far as it goes that's okay because yeah it fulfills a need in me Interesting. and if I can share it with others and they enjoy it then that is amazing but yeah, yeah I remember uh, Carolyn Merced was saying something she wrote uh, Tales of Tia mm-hmm. her grandma, and she was in yeah. my band Azure Sweet. Azure Sweet. Yep. oh my gosh that's yeah. right the connection. The con- yeah. that's right yeah and I remember her saying that it just bottles up she would have this, you know, mm-hmm. she big had a busy family and but she had to get express herself. She had to tell these stories yeah. and and I think that's that's really that's wonderful. I that find those outlet. times in my life when I'm not creating music, you know, when life is busy and the kids were little or mm-hmm. I've had health issues and, and I just don't do my music, I slowly and slowly get more depressed and more Mm. depressed until finally I'm like oh I've got to get all this music out and then it's like the joy comes back into me it's like music feeds my happiness Mm -hmm. yeah oh that's fantastic I'll tell you I I feel very shallow sometimes on this show uh (laughs) you know talking to uh, the artists who who, they have something build up and they have this muse Mm -hmm. you know I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of something intelligent to say uh uh, something along the lines always sound intelligent (laughs) well thank you that's my training as an actor It helps. <laughs> but I'll tell you, thinking back, what, I have a question for you that I'm going to tell you where it came from. Uh, my question for you is, do you ever write for someone else as, as a gift or, or to express to them? The reason I ask this is because on a very shallow, shallow level, 
uh, the majority of songs that I wrote before uh, I left college were sappy and they were for a girl. I got to tell you. I mean, I can I can remember this. I wrote one called The Rainbow Girl for Pete's Sakes because she was just oh, no. sparkling. The rainbow girl, a very special girl. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll stop right there. Yeah. That's one that I'm hoping the humidity in the basement takes yeah. care of at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was always... To get a message to someone else. It was never, and this is where I'm shallow, it was never because I was filled with a with a melody and such. Do you do that? Do you ever uh, write a song that's for someone or towards someone? Yeah, and I think it's kind of a progression, too. When I was younger, most of those songs, you know, they were angsty love songs oh. about some boy that I liked I, who didn't like me, those oh kinds dear. of things. Yeah. And then as, I, as you get older and you develop more depth and wisdom and those songs become about and deeper things Mm -hmm. but yeah if that's what you mean writing for I've had people who've asked me to write songs for them so and that was a really fun experience I had a a girl who was in a wheelchair and she um, had had a really rough life her mother was not happy to have a child in a wheelchair and was mean and abusive and cruel to her and she found me on YouTube and asked me to write a song (gasps) for her so that was a really neat experience to try to put myself in someone else's you know shoes and, and, and really, did you yeah oh wow and it, was that a song that you shared with uh, anyone else or was that something that you wrote and gave I, to her i put it on youtube mm-hmm. so yeah wonderful she, she really enjoyed it and that yeah what a way to heal yeah for her i know? hope so yeah Wow. Well, that's right. Several of the people that we've talked to that are local songwriters and, uh, you know, have, have delved into many different areas of, of songwriting have mentioned how they've been able to connect with people that yeah. they never dreamt they would have. Yeah. Um, and I think that comes down to the universal uh, language of music, if mm-hmm. you will. We can all mm-hmm. certainly share and, and feel. Um, you mentioned earlier that you performed at ward events and things mm-hmm. of that sort for your church and everything. Um how is it being the musician over in the corner or what have you? Do you feel appreciated? Or? Um, slightly. Sometimes. <laughs> I think there's a few people who appreciate and the rest are just like, whatever. You know, yeah. unless I think unless you really love music or you are a musician, you don't realize how much of your heart and soul goes yeah. into that music. And so, yeah. you know, most people probably just take it for granted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's okay. It's okay. I don't have to feel, you know appreciated Mm -hmm. it's okay (laughs) well uh, tell me did you come from a musical family um yeah kind of my Uh mom and dad they love music my mom was in a band when i was little that's probably where my dream came from from seeing her and you know just a little county band they played a few places my brothers had a um, garage band barn band because oh, we didn't have a garage yeah. we had a barn my brother yeah they and this was back in the late 80s so they had the long hair <laughs> Yay, and the, the mullets okay, yep. yeah, yeah. Now, all they i can think of rockers. is diary of a wimpy kid what is that band called <laughs> loaded diaper yeah, or something, something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, making fun of those grunge bands <laughs> yeah so you know we did we had a lot of music in the home mm-hmm. and what about your yeah. kids uh are they following along do they appreciate yes i you know i wish that they would pick an instrument and stick with it and play it <laughs> and my daughter has recently started playing the ukulele which oh, is really good. fun and yeah, I, fun. I can't give her a lot of direction because you know sometimes your mom giving you direction is doesn't not always well received yeah. no, no so she kind of is teaching herself which is fine because that's the way I learned I taught myself yeah. how to play the guitar and the ukulele and everything mm-hmm. so um but my kids love to sing my son sings all the time in the shower when he's watching TV <laughs> when he's playing his video games he's always singing mm-hmm. my you daughter ever suggest sing. another instrument to <laughs> <him>. <laughs> no it's pretty fun we like watching him listening yeah. to him and my daughter and they're both into musical theater and choir yeah. and things yeah. So, yeah and your daughter was uh, a part of Starlight that Express, Express yeah. wasn't yeah. she yeah, yeah. Was, was she the controller she Is was it? the yeah. voice yeah oh, that's fantastic. A, that was a hard job i mean yeah. she did it very well and when yeah. she came out at the end she what is that called swishing yeah. or whatever that was <laughs> the... she did the little floss dance yet yeah. <laughs> got a Katy Perry dance i guess is, that's all i know <laughs> shows how in touch i am yeah. it, that just made me think of mm-hmm. uh, my brother uh, who i've talked about quite often we make fun of him because his oldest son, uh, he really wanted him to be a musician following mm-hmm. in his footsteps. And, you know, they had him playing the cello and the guitar, and uh, he had all these lessons. And he ended up being a football player. And uh, we, we bring that up to my brother as much as we possibly <laughs> yep, can. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. yeah. I tried to plant seeds in my kids. I tried to teach them piano. But when I was little and I was taking piano lessons, I hated them. I hated practicing. Oh, me too. I wanted yeah. to play what was in my brain, what was mm-hmm. in my, you know, and my piano teacher did not want to hear that 
she mm-hmm. wanted me to play what was on the page. <laughs> and so it kind of created yep. these negative feelings towards practicing. And and I never, you know, and so I was forced to practice. Ah, you, know, yes. you have to practice. You have to practice. And I just thought, when I have kids, I'm not going to force them. You know, mm-hmm. I hope they will have that desire within themselves. So I haven't pushed them too hard. And like I said, I didn't learn to play the guitar until I was a teenager, late teenager. Ah. I was 19. And so I still have hope for them. And if they don't, pick up an instrument and, <laughs> and okay. start playing. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. They'll find their path. Yeah. yeah. That's great. You know, I, one thing I was impressed with and why I wanted you on the show is that uh, because I've heard you sing and I've heard your music and I've, I've been blown away by oh, your talent. You. And you're so humble about it. I mean, I would. she doesn't ever toot her horn, you know, just no. quietly sits That's back. Just and just, But she gets up there and it's amazing. And what's what's inspiring to me is to see you doing doing this on your own and you were telling me before the show that you you know you've been able to be on YouTube and connect with people all over now that anyone can do this and I think that's so inspiring for so many men and women who right now probably think you know I can I have to give up this dream you know I don't need yeah. to do but there's really no excuse anymore because you can go online you can expose yourself to uh, so many out there with your talent and and how because you doing this you were able to help so many people that you have no idea that you've touched yeah. you know that's yeah. that's the beauty of it is how many people are touched by your example and I, I say mm-hmm. how worthwhile. I mean, there's mm-hmm. a big joke right now with social media and such, taking pictures of the food that you're going to eat and, you know, <laughs> yes. sharing that with the yes, world. Yes, enchiladas. Mm-hmm. I, I think music might be uh, yeah. maybe a little more effective. Yeah, and, I, and I, I've seen so many that have just decided to give up or just think that, you know, I, I can't pursue anything. But you really can. There's yeah. still... In, Even no in your age. small little, you know, your your bubble doesn't have to be huge in the world to reach people. Yeah. You can just start small and reach out to that little bubble, your family and your friends. And if that's as far as it goes, hey, at least you shared it. You shared it. Yep. And yeah. I think so many have that ability and talent. They just haven't tapped into it yet. You yeah. know, so, yeah. yeah. And when, wasn't it Kurt Vonnegut? That said, uh, and I'm going to massacre uh, this quote, just Uh-oh. so you know. Oh, uh, but but he talked about you know every day just write a poem, write a song, do something, mm-hmm. even if it's bad. Just the fact that you're expressing it mm-hmm. is a good thing, mm-hmm. in that you're uh, you're exploring something. Mm-hmm. I think creativity is such a, a huge gift in our lives that yeah. so many people don't ever tap into and you know try to develop and try to use. And now, did you go through a period of time in your life where you were fearful? to try to express yourself through music. It's scary. Mm-hmm. It's really scary. Even now, today, even releasing this album, you know, you put, like I said, so much of your heart and soul into it, and it's something so personal. At least for mm-hmm. me, the songs I write, they they are my innermost thoughts and feelings. Mm-hmm. And you put it out there, and you never know if people are going to like it or hate it uh-huh. or appreciate it or mm-hmm. toss it aside. And so it is. It's scary even today. You just have to get to that point where you're, you're doing it for the right reasons. If you're doing it to please people, if oh. you're doing it for applause and recognition, yeah. <laughs> then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Because yeah. if you don't get that, then you're crushed. Yeah. You know. So I've just learned, you know, I'm doing this for me. If if there are people out there who are going to appreciate this and enjoy it, then I'm so grateful for that. But mm-hmm. I've got to do it for me. Yeah. I would like to hear one of uh, one of Latressa's songs. Absolutely, yes. and I'll tell you, uh, you emailed me uh, mm-hmm. actually several uh, MP3s, mm-hmm. and I've been yeah. listening to them. I like them all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you. Uh, and we were talking about what your favorite might be, uh, and you suggest we might play one called "Love Is Blind." Mm-hmm. Uh, is there a story behind this one? Well, this one's kind of special to me. I mean, they all are. Like I said, they're kind of like my children. It's hard to pick a favorite, <laughs> but this one is extra special because I wrote it for my kids. And oh. And I um, wrote it as a duet and taught my daughter to sing the other part of the duet oh, with me. Wow. So we sing it together. And on this album, when we recorded it, it was actually about two, two and a half years ago. So she was 12 or almost 12 when she oh, recorded this. Wow. And she's 15 now. So oh. she, her voice has changed quite <laughs> yeah. a bit. So it's really fun to have this captured in, yeah, in, in time. forever, yep. you know, to have her little sweet little voice on oh. there. And how nice. And there are so many people who have, uh, like with the old, I'm, I'm revealing how old we, we yeah, are well, here. Yeah, we are. Uh, yeah. With the old answering machines where it really was cassette <laughs> tapes and wow, such. Wow, you are. Pe- people would, they would save those tapes of someone who had passed yeah, on yeah. Or, or grandchildren yeah. or something like that uh, to hear their voice. How wonderful yeah. that you've shared yeah. an artistic thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's uh, let's go yes. ahead and take a listen to this. This okay. is Love is Blind by Latressa Smith. <laughs>
gorgeous yeah, by Latressa oh. Smith, Love is Blind. Where are the tissues? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you, one of the things that I love about this show is in meeting people, not only do we get to talk to them, but uh, they often forget that they are being recorded on video. And uh, this I is my sloppy segue into reminding people to go check out the show you. on Facebook, uh, on Radio St. George. And That's Radio Space ST Space George. Broadcasting live on Facebook right now, but it will be archived if uh, you're interested in checking out the entire thing. You can see we're also streaming live on YouTube. Now, the reason I bring this up is because I know what it means when they say we're aware of this address, but I'm keeping my eye on you. Not in a creepy way, but uh, (laughs) I will tell you. Remembering, I'm assuming, uh, the performing of it with your daughter, the recording of it, and also yeah. perhaps remembering when you wrote it and such. Uh, yeah. It was just lovely to watch your face during oh, that. Thank you. Yeah. My music is very emotional to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Even just listening to it sometimes, it's, it's like feeling it all over again. When I write my music, I pour all my emotions into it. And so listening back to it, a lot of times those emotions bubble right back mm-hmm. up again. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Actually, I can actually see it bubbling right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. What you, how about your husband? Does he support this? Does he work with you? He is not the most musical person, but he's <laughs> great at humoring me and my, you know, he supports me in that he lets me buy my equipment and and supports me to go out and do my performances. And I've tried to teach him to play a few instruments, I bought him a cajon, a, you know, like the box yeah. drum. Because yeah, yeah. he liked to drum in high school and thought maybe he would play the drum for me. I've tried to incorporate him, but he has totally different music tastes He's than, than myself. <laughs> He's more of a hip hop rap kind of, you know. No. Totally different oh, styles. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, well, that's great. Are, are you looking to branch out at all? I mean, you, you certainly have this style of music, which is absolutely mm-hmm. beautiful. Again, I have Thank to you. reiterate that. Yeah. Uh, but also, you mentioned that uh, your children are into musical theater. Do you do any work on stage? Do you? You know, I haven't since high school, and I would love to get back into it. But I've always kind of felt like man, when my kids are a little older, yeah. I always say that. Yeah. But, you know, I just, my family in my life has always come first. And yeah. so I feel like maybe when my kids are out of the home, because being committed to a theater production is time consuming, yes. as you know, <laughs> many hours yeah. and months sometimes. Yeah. And I'm just not willing to take myself out of my home for that mm-hmm. much time. Yeah. So I thought when my kids are older, then I'll dabble and, you know, yeah. just get into something for for fun. Yeah. You know, I don't expect to get any major leading roles, <laughs> but it would be fun to just be back on the stage and, yeah. and part of that scene again. Be part of the community. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Well, you've mentioned a few times how important your family is uh, mm-hmm. and such. What do you guys do for fun? I mean, we, we talk about the music <laughs> and such. Mm-hmm. What is having fun and getting out and spending some good quality time together? We like to go four-wheeling. We have a rhino. Of and course. So we'll out and yes. Go. Imagine <laughs> the person who wrote that song yeah. that we just heard out on a four-wheeler. Screaming it up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just like being home together. We yeah. we like to go to movies. We're kind of low energy people, so uh, we're not all out there doing crazy stuff all the time. But we just like being together, even if we're yeah. just home doing our own things. But we're in this under the same roof. You know, we like going to movies. We we support each other in whatever we're doing. My son plays football, and my husband's the coach, so uh-huh. we go to the oh, games. I, I struck a chord earlier with football. Yeah. I yeah. didn't mean to do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's what I, I picture your music is the back porch. Yeah. style where oh, the yeah. family sitting there you know the barbecue's going and yeah. there's just your family pulls out the instruments and starts singing that's yeah. the kind and i love how this is worded your music is down to earth folksy homegrown flavor yeah. <laughs> i love that that's that's kind of your it's homegrown not flavor big and flashy yeah. or showy it's just you know just sit back, back porch kind of music back porch music that's yeah. what i picture at the sunrise well boy sunset. if you read that again mm-hmm. i think it's because we're coming up on dinner time but all i can think of is cracker barrel <laughs> <laughs> You know, down to earth, folksy, homegrown yeah. flavor. So, if someone wants to purchase your music, mm-hmm. how do they go about doing this? So, they can contact me through my email, Latressa DS, right. one word, Latressa DS right. at Gmail. Okay. They can look me up on Facebook and reach out to me through Facebook. Those would probably be the best ways. And do you and do you perform at different events? If someone wanted to book you for an event, you or? know, I haven't done any performances for since Azure Suite kind of uh, drifted uh-huh. out. but Same thing you know, happened to the Beatles a, for a yeah. while. It's okay. <laughs> but I have kind of felt like it's, you know, it's time to come back. Uh-huh. We had a tragic family event that happened in 2016. Oh, I'm sorry. And that's uh-huh. kind of what made my music at that time stop. Ah, uh, You know, yeah. I, I mean, it took a few months for the momentum to kind of die down. But mm-hmm. I realized right now I'd rather be helping my family through this difficult time than... Mm-hmm working on getting more performances and things so that kind of but I feel like you know we've we've moved past that Mm -hmm. I mean you never move past those kind of things but but we're at a point now that I feel like I'm I think I'm ready to maybe start getting back Mm -hmm. out there Mm -hmm. yeah and I I think I remember that uh not to go into any detail too much but that you I think you wrote a song Mm -hmm. about that event too so yeah it's on the album yeah 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 for my sister-in-law that's beautiful yeah what a great tribute yeah. What a great tribute. And her. going along with the, uh, you know, the down-to-earth, the folksy, and the homegrown flavor, <laughs> uh, you've mentioned some upbeat songs that you've mm-hmm. written, maybe uh, with a little wit, a little flair. Yeah. Uh, in these, uh, we have one here called Move With Me. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, you mentioned earlier 
about how you would write songs when you were younger, as a lot of us did about, you know, the, the unrequited love and things. Oh, and I did actually start to think, OK, are we going the Taylor Swift direction here or, <laughs> or what? And uh, I have to say, when I look at the title, Move With Me, please forgive me. I may have to flee this studio with oh. what I'm about to say. But all I, all I can Watch think of it. knowing it's upbeat is shake it off. Oh. So, oh, no. Uh, me, oh, would, no. Would you be willing to prove us wrong yeah. no, so uh, actually, by listening to this? Yeah, but I want to tell you a little bit, too. This song is kind of fun because it's about the interaction between a performer and the audience. Ah. And so, you know, it's all about here I am as a performer. I'm putting myself out here for you. <laughs> I'm giving you a piece oh, of myself. Wow. And if you've ever been on a stage, you know that there is an energy from the audience mm. coming back to you. And yeah. sometimes it's a great energy and you can feel it and sometimes it falls a little flat and you're like <laughs> it's not you're trying to get that energy and yes. i'm one of those performers that oh. i feed off that energy i need that energy it fuels me and so that's what this song is about is giving a piece of myself mm. to the audience and taking that energy that they're giving back and mm -hmm. it's kind of this give and take relationship wonderful can we give it a listen yeah, yeah. all right this is move with me by latressa smith to our listening audience out there uh check it out on facebook we had some uh, fun little dancing yeah, going on yeah. here in the studio <laughs> and it was actually a, a lot of fun to just see the uh the different feel the different energy mm -hmm. beautiful beautiful piece that we heard first the mm -hmm. love is blind mm -hmm. and then to see this one everything just lightened up yeah. it was fun to watch you latressa just mm -hmm. start grooving to it <laughs> Little toe tapper, right? just a little toe tapper, yep. <laughs> just a little bit of talent there. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So, uh, Latressa, who are your inspirations? I mm -hmm. I mentioned the name Taylor Swift earlier, and I I apologize. Oh. Uh, should that not be the direction you're going? Uh, who yeah. are uh, your influences? You know, these days, I don't even know. I mean, I like listening to music. I don't know if I would call them influences, but like I said, back in the day, Jewel was a big one. <laughs> Sarah McLaughlin. Ah, uh -huh, yeah. Um, even Tori Amos, she kind of went a little weird, but some of her early stuff was I really connected to. But it's okay; she hasn't started listening to the show yeah. yet. I don't <laughs> think so. Sorry, Tori, if you're listening. 
Yeah. So these days, I just I love things like the oh hellos and lumineers, kind of that mm. fun, folky, you yeah. know, a little offbeat, yeah. different. Not everything you hear on the radio, mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, that I want to say again that this is just something that you've decided to make the de- you made the decision that you were going to just go ahead and do this in your life and express yourself mm-hmm. and. And you've done it. It was a dream that I always had. And I went to a workshop about creativity. Actually, I was a guest Ah. at this workshop about creativity. Somebody asked me to come and talk Uh about being creative. She had other guests there, too. And she challenged the class to go home and make a dream board. And so I took that challenge upon myself. And I went home and I made a dream board. And the things that I dreamed of doing, and one of those things was going to a studio. Huh. And because I had always dreamed of being in a real professional recording studio mm-hmm. and recording my songs. And so I made this little board with pictures of people in a studio and and me performing my music. Because up until that point, I never really had done anything big with my music. Me with a with people on a band, you know, like uh-huh. on a stage. Yeah. And it was so crazy. It was within weeks of creating that dream board that this ball just started rolling and it just all sort of came to life. The Gypsies 3 was the first album, really, that was a professional, you know, like Uh in the studio. And it just, it just happened. It just materialized. I believe in dream boards. They work. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, if you have a dream and it's like, until you do something, it's just always going to be a dream. Always be a dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's how my dream kind of became real. Well, how do you find a studio? I mean, when when I think about it, I think of, you know, the Brady Bunch 1970s. You know, you see the guy with the Bob Ross hair and he's got the cigarette and he's, you know, sitting there working the boards and and what have you, you know, in order to record these songs and such. But uh, where do you go to find this out? If you have a song and you want to record it, what do you do? Well, there weren't a lot of options back then. There were Spiral Studios, Mm -hmm. which I believe is no longer in, in effect. And there was John Houston. And I asked my brother, who's also a musician, you know, like, where do you go? What do you do? I want I really want to start getting in a studio. And so we went the John Houston route. He was he was more affordable. Mm-hmm. And he, but he's amazing. He's so great to work with. So that's where we went. They also have, I think now they have one called Titan. And I don't know if it's oh. open to the public, but it's uh-huh. at Tuacon. And Ryan Tilby, who ran Spiral Studios, yeah. is now running that through Tuacon. Oh, that's so good to know. I think that's right. another option. Right. But yeah, I would just... I mean, if I was giving recommendations, I would say mm-hmm. call up John Houston and mm-hmm. get on his schedule. He's really easy, fun to work with. And don't know. feel intimidated right. to go go right. do it. You know, John can help you through and yep. help you record yep. and guide it, you through. Mm-hmm. What, what kind of money does it take? Or is this mm-hmm. something you can just go in to consult with? Or um, You know, I, he charges around 33 an hour, I believe. Oh, that's not bad. That's it. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Yep. And, wow. you know, you kind of, so maybe you have to save a little bit to work up to that. And mm-hmm. depending on how much time you need how big your project is. He says a lot of people will just go in once a month and record one song, you know, so it might take them a year to finish an album. But if you're on a budget and you can't afford (laughs) $5,000 to record 12 songs, you know, because it can take a few days to record one song. So that's, you know, each song can cost hundreds of dollars. It can, it can add up fast. But if you just start somewhere and just record one song, if that's all you can do, start Mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, right? and there are. It's not necessarily the same quality, but uh, we live in a day and age with iPhones, with uh, yeah. Macs, and things of that mm-hmm. sort. You can start. You can experiment. You can start uh, putting together some mm-hmm. decent stuff. Yeah, uh, and maybe be ready to walk into that studio for the more advanced. If you're if you're good with technology, you can buy equipment. You can do it yourself at home on a computer. That's mm. kind of how I started. Um, I was making my YouTube videos, and people were like, why don't you make an album? I'm like, because money. And, <laughs> Hello. Know, yeah, and, you know, back then, my I didn't feel like my songs were really great enough to take to a studio. I was still, you know, fairly new at writing. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, they were fun, and they were good for then. But, yeah, I'm glad I didn't take them to a studio and spend hundreds or thousands mm-hmm. of dollars on those songs. But, um, you know, start with your home studio. You can buy some fairly cheap equipment and a microphone, and you can even do it through your iPad, through Garage, GarageBand, yeah. an app. Wow. I've done some songs through there, nothing that I would, you know, produce and share uh-huh. with the world, but to share with friends or, yeah. 
Well, I'll tell you, th thank you so much for sharing your work with us today yes. and also for spending this time. Yeah. Uh, we are out of time yeah. uh, with yeah. this show. Yeah. Uh, but we do have some stuff that's coming up. Uh, what's that, yeah. Christina? Oh, on the 29th, uh, we'll be off there for a little bit for Thanksgiving. And then we're back on the 29th. We'll have people from the Dickens Festival here that will be performing there with Trey Patterson and his magic show. And uh, a couple other performers will be here. So, yeah, we're, we've got a good lineup for December coming up soon. So. So, Latressa, mm -hmm. once more, thank, thank you for you, joining Latressa. us here in the studio. Thank it's you. a pleasure. And thank you. Thank yeah. you for all you do to help us enjoy yeah. the people in our community. I've really enjoyed listening to your shows and getting to know some of the awesome people you've had on. So, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, it's an honor. <laughs> we've we've enjoyed this. I'm going to add lot. you to yeah. the list. I think we're up to nine listeners yeah, now. now. This is fantastic. <laughs> but, yeah, thank you for inspiring so many, oh, Latressa. And you. keep doing it. Okay. Keep doing it. Yes, keep that music out there. And, yeah, everyone, keep your ear to the ground for opportunities not only to be an audience member but also to participate and to create and yeah. until we get to join each other again on on the arts keep your focus on the arts <laughs>